Hi guys, uh, Lanetrill here, and just before I start the video, I'm just going to quickly explain um, my specs. So I have a 7700K in a Z270 Fatality ITX from ASRock. I'm running uh, a 512 gig SSD from Crucial, a 1070, all uh, powered by a 760 watt platinum power supply from Silverstone, running 16 gigs of RAM. Now this shouldn't really concern you if you've got less specs or more, these tweaks should still help you out unless you have a truly terrible PC. But if you want my opinion, kind of a good uh, processor now to get for CS, because CS is mostly processor um, driven, would be a 4770K because you can pick them up super cheap, they still perform absolutely fantastically. If you can get one, a 4790K because the thermal interface material on that is way better and you probably would have to delid your 4770K to get good overclocking performance. So. Without further ado, I'll start the video and uh, hopefully you uh, find this useful. If you do, let me know. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need to do is go into your BIOS. This will be F2 or delete in most cases, other boards may vary. Uh, then put in your BIOS password if you have one. I have one simply because I attend LANs. And then you'll be greeted by normally a simple screen that will look something more like uh, this. So with that simple screen, you're going to want to change it into some sort of advanced mode and then you're going to want to look for XMP. I can't show you XMP because I'm running a custom uh, BIOS that XMP isn't enabled on and doesn't work on, so I can't show you that. Then look for your CPU settings and there should be something like speed step. Turn off speed step. Um, then once you've turned off the speed step, you need to go up to the core ratio. Now this can be per core or all core. Uh, you want to go to all core. You want to look for the maximum turbo frequency in the Intel Arc, which I'll overlay mine here, and you can type that in. Now the way this works is like a multiply, so 47 will be 47 times 100, so that, that would be equivalent to 4.7 gigahertz. For 42 would be 4.2 gigahertz. 12 would be 1.2 gigahertz. So I'm going to set mine. And then once you've done that, you're going to go out and save and exit changes. Then the computer should reboot and I'll see you back in the window. Okay, so once you've made those changes in the BIOS, we need to somewhat verify that they're actually uh, taking place. So the first thing you can do is open Task Manager. Uh, not like that. Like that over to performance you'll see that it isn't really fluctuating it's just staying at 4.7 4.8 this is pretty close to the 5.6 it won't be exact it's just the way things are um, but you can see that it's not fluctuating good start okay so this is a clean install of windows completely the only thing that's happened is i've installed counter-strike and i haven't even launched it so i'm going to go through absolutely everything that i do so the first thing i do is i'm going to come down to uh, start here and look for the power and sleep settings. Uh, I'm also on the latest Windows 10 build if that makes a difference to anyone so if anything looks slightly different that's probably why. So I'm going to go to additional power settings and this will bring up the classic version of the control panel. So I'm going to set this to high performance. Now this will make some changes to the way Windows treats the CPU. If you've heard of core parking before, core parking normally takes place when you have these uh, profiles set to lower um, ones like power, save and balanced. So I'm still going to check this with the core parking utility, but I'll show you later. There's not really any need to use the core parking utility, so you can skip it out because uh, the cores are unparked when this is set in high performance. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring up the Windows 10 version of settings, and we're going to come over to gaming. We're going to turn off record and turn off the open the game bar. Uh, make sure all of that is off. Uh, game mode I leave on. Uh, broadcasting, I just turn all of this off. So off, off, off. Uh, Xbox networking you can leave on because you can't even turn it off and it makes no difference. Okay, so we've gone ahead and we've disabled the, the Xbox stuff, but there's still actually some stuff that will uh, be on. So if I can remember where this is, I think it's in personalized. Uh, no, it is, oh, what is it called? Brain, brain, brain. Can go back into settings a second. Uh, personalized accounts. Hmm, I think. Ah, it's in the notification. So it's under display, sorry, not personalized. And then you're going to come down to notifications. I turn off all notifications because they always come up like in front of the window. Because for some reason on Windows 10, full screen is no longer 
true full screen and things can go over your full screen baffles me uh, but I guess Microsoft can do what they want because Windows is Windows uh, so I turn all the notifications off and make sure you have focus assist off uh, so off and all of these off because this is what causes huge alt tabbing delays uh, so once you're done with that we can go ahead and go into our video control panel now if you have 144Hz, uh, 120, uh, 240e, 180e, you know, a high refresh rate monitor, you're going to come over to change resolution and uh, you're going to change it over to your highest refresh rate. In this case this is a 120Hz monitor, so that's what I'm going to click. Uh, in some cases you'll be here and you still won't be able to select, you'll only be able to select up to 60. <coughs> so if you scroll down to the bottom you'll have another subsection with the same resolution of uh, 1920 by 1080, you're going to click on that one and then select the highest refresh rate. If you do this successfully, you won't have to use a uh, dash freq or um, the other uh, launch option for refresh rate that I can't remember off the top of my head, because if it's set in Windows, the game will natively run at this uh, refresh rate. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, OBS hasn't crashed. So now my screen is uh, running at um, its maximum refresh rate. So now I'm going to come down to manage 3D settings. Uh, you can do this for just the game or you can do it for global settings. Uh, I'm going to do it for just the game because I do play other games. Uh, so I'm going to come down and choose the CSGO EXE. So um, the gamma correction I have off. Uh, maximum pre-rendered frames, I set that to 1. That should make it feel a lot smoother. Power management, I use maximum performance. Uh, the texture filter and quality, I have high performance, uh, I leave that on allow, uh, try linear, uh, um, I have off, vertical sync, I have off, virtual reality, I leave alone, threaded optimization, I leave alone, I'm just trying to see if there's anything else, shader cache, I leave on. Uh, Anti-aliasing, um, I use the global setting which means it's application controlled, so that means CSGO can decide. Um, and antiscopic filtering, I leave off, ambient occlusion, off. And we hit apply, and there we go. Cool. So now I'm going to come over to where I have CS installed, which in this case is uh, C, uh, Primafiles x86, Steam, Steam Apps Common, Counter Strike Global Offensive, see the CSGO EXE, I'm going to right click, I'm going to click Properties, click Compatibility, I'm going to do Disable Full Screen Optimization, so this disables a bunch of the uh, DX39 hooks, so things that hook into the game to put overlays up that Windows has, um, and generally enables better performance. A lot of people find their game input isn't correct, like it feels weird, this is normally because you have some sort of DirectX hook, like uh, Discord, or... Um, NVIDIA Shadow Play, Players.tv. If you want my opinion on uh, one that causes the least um, effect to input, I personally use Players.tv, but your mileage may vary. The optimal thing to do is to use nothing that hooks into your game. Uh, so, disable full screen optimization. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply and OK. So, now I think we're pretty much done. The only thing I personally do is I install. Uh, um, Vibrance GUI. All this does is sets my digital vibrance to um, 100 when the game is open and sets it to um, back to zero when I close it so my whole computer isn't just fully like blinding me. So, oh, I've already done that. Yeah. So I click on this, auto start, affect the primary monitor only, add a program, and that's where I have to launch CS. So now we will go ahead and start creating the config for CS. So I will create a config, come back and explain it. In fact, quickly before this, I'm just going to show you how the core parking utility makes no difference, like I said earlier. Uh, so you really um, don't need to uh, like download this. I mean, you could try it for yourself, but it will make no difference. So I'm going to go ahead and somewhere there's a download. So I'm going to install this just to show you that it, uh, x64 that it will make no difference. So 
So as you can see, the index is already all on 100 because I set that power profile up. All right, so I've created the config, so I'm just gonna go over it really quickly and explain what everything does. Rate settings, these are your network settings. These uh, slashes mean they're a comment, means it isn't took into account by the game, it makes it readable for humans. So we have the command rate, 128, that enables you to make full use of 128 tick servers. Update rate, 128, same applies. CL interp zero means the game will set it to the lowest possible interpolation rate supported by the uh, game engine. CL interpolate one means you still want to use inter uh, interpolation, but you want to use the lowest value that was set above. Interp ratio is two. Now you can argue one or two. I would use two. Um, simply because what that means is it stores another value in memory so if one doesn't get to you then um, yeah so if it doesn't receive an update there's one stored in memory that it can use if it doesn't arrive in time um, because otherwise it will just wait which is bad um, so there's a whole write-up on this um, which I'll link in the description which you can read up on if you want but I'm not going to explain it all in this video uh, but I'll link you to the reddit thread okay uh, CL predict being honest, I can't put, can't remember what the, the it does, and the same for predict weapons. But I remember that you need it on, so leave it on. <laughs> I mean, you're more than welcome to research yourself if you want, but I can't remember off the top of my head. See our lag compensation one. You might think, uh, oh, I don't want lag compensation. You do. You will not be able to play without it, or you will, but you will have the worst experience imaginable, um, and you won't even be aware necessarily that you're having a bad experience. So leave that on. See our resend and see our timeout to do with uh, how long it will uh, re-attempt things and resend things before it tries uh, disconnects. And then for FPS, this is all the stuff to do with FPS, we have our dynamic one on. Now I have an image uh, which shows this. So this is um, uh, my brain's just there we go. So this shows the lighting for gunfires when enemies shoot. So this image shows the difference. So you want that on. Um, CL show help gets rid of the bomb message. You know the bomb is here. The tutorial, um, our dynamic eye gloss, eye move, eye shift. These are all visual elements, mostly to do with um, the eyes that you just don't need that cause lag. Uh, muzzle flash light. Uh, I have set on zero. That's obviously for the muzzle flash. Uh, anti aliasing zero. Uh, aspect ratio minus one. I don't actually have that. Uh, and sys reflection details to do the reflections. Mac mode two means that it will try and force uh, multiple rendering and our draw traces first person to do with drawing traces then we have my view model you can set yours this is what i use then we have the huds and the radar uh, and the net graph settings my crosshair settings the mouse settings uh, raw input one is on if raw input one is on the windows mouse settings uh, here not here because windows 10 is terrible here make no difference um, People have said, oh, I turned this off and I became amazing. No, you didn't, unless you had raw input zero on. If you have it on, it makes zero difference, apart from possibly, in some cases, in the buy menu. So unless you're telling me that you being able to buy without acceleration has made you a god, you are simply having a placebo and you are still the exact same skill level. The only difference is you magically, uh, you know, thought you could perform better, so you did which shows how much of uh, a mental game CS is. Then we have CL Custom Excel 0. This turns off mouse acceleration in the game engine, not in Windows. Um, these ones here are older to do with Windows mouse acceleration. I still put them in for good measure, but it really should make no difference. Sound uh, just basically sets all the volumes and also um, lowers the sound delay ever so slightly. And then some miscellaneous binds for uh, jumping, basically, for mouse wheel jump. So I'm going to go ahead, go in game, exec this, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so just before we go in game, I'm just going to quickly show you something. If you're not on a clean install, um, you're going to want to clear this because this will remove all the shit from your previous uh, configs. I'm doing the same thing over and over because uh, I'm trying to talk. So go to your Steam folder and go to user data. In here, these um, will end your various Steam IDs. So this is my Steam ID. Uh, and every Steam account you've ever logged in, there'll be a folder here. Go over to 7.30, this is the app ID for Counter-Strike. And you'll have a remote folder, CFG. Um, delete everything in there. And you'll also have a local folder. Delete all of the millions of configs in there. That'll completely reset your game if you don't want to reinstall Windows. Because all of these uh, config map generators, in my opinion, uh, and experience just seem to cause a shit ton of lag. So before we launch the game, the only launch option you need um, 
is no vid. Do not set cores, do not set refresh rate because you set that in Windows earlier. So I am literally just going to go over here and do set options dash no vid. Okay. And now I'm going to just uh, launch the game. I run all of these at lowest. Um, there's quite a lot of debate over what video settings uh, make a difference um, in terms of whether you can see through Molotovs. It's up to you what you set these at. Obviously it's dependent on the performance of your computer, but make sure you have FXAA, anti-aliasing disabled, and texture, um, sorry, not texture filtering, and laptop power saving disabled, and the most important one that I now can't see, multi-core rendering must be enabled. That's really important. So I'm going to apply the settings. My game's going to freak out. And now I need to change over an OBS quickly. So now you can see my uh, actual game. So we've set all of that up. And if I just load up Dust2, for example, oh, uh, we're in game. Uh, this is just uh, a bit of testing for me. Though this isn't an accurate representation of FPS because there's no players. I'm just checking the game. It feels OK. It feels all right to me. Uh, my FPS is actually going to be slightly reduced just because of uh, the fact that I'm recording this. but. Uh, Hopefully after this you should have pretty good uh, FPS and little um, input delay and you should have a better Counter-Strike experience basically. So hope this uh, helps some of you and if you have any questions hit me up on Twitter which is at Laneshot or go ahead and comment on this video. But uh, probably the quickest way to reach me is on Twitter so go ahead and send me a tweet or a DM request over there. Hope you guys have a good day and I'll uh, speak to you later.